Instant Sanka Coffee, the delicious coffee that lets you sleep, presents the Johnny Carson Show, starring Johnny Carson. And now here's the young man who has to account for this half hour, Johnny Carson. Uh, go ahead, son. Daddy! I defy any loyal, red-blooded American to tune out any television show which begins with a five-year-old boy whose first word is daddy. <laughs> Gee, you know, actually, it's amazing what you can learn from children. Just having them down on the program. As Cicero said, Nux sink id verant sine ad finitum. <laughs> Which always struck me as rather amusing. <laughs> um, you know, it's always a great thrill to welcome a new television station somewhere in the country to the CBS network. And tonight, I'd like to say goodbye <laughs> to television station WDAG in Oklahoma City. They were, uh, they were putting up a new tower this week, and they struck oil. <laughs> and uh, they've converted the station to a refinery down there. So happy refining, WDAG, and thanks for being with us the past four weeks. <laughs> now, I have to do something here, and uh, I'm a little embarrassed because I usually do this before the program, and that's, that's call my wife uh, for luck. She needs a lot of luck. And uh, yeah, we got behind in rehearsal today, so I thought I'd do it now. And you should never mention to anybody that you're supposed to call your wife. Because if you do, it seems like every time you turn around, somebody says, Johnny, why don't you call your wife? Johnny, why don't you call your wife? <laughs> you see what I mean? Every time you turn around, that happens. But I am going to call my wife, and I hope you'll bear with me for a couple of minutes. Now, another thing I want to point out that I'm going to call my real wife, Jody, who uh, we live out in Encino. I don't want you to think that I'm just calling some girl that we pay to act like my wife. I wouldn't pay anyone to act like my wife. <laughs> oh, another thing I want to mention about telephones on tel Have you ever noticed about telephoning on television that nobody ever gets a wrong number? No matter if there's a play, a very dramatic situation, nobody, you can't dial a wrong number on TV and I'll prove it to you. Now, my number at home is state four, one one nine nine and i bet i can dial any number and get my real wife just to show you how it works uh, i'll just make up a number at random here and dial it uh, let's see random uh <laughs> say random three 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 random three 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 and i'll just throw in another three for the fun of it <laughs> hello jody See, I told you, this, uh, this television is so phony, you can't believe things. Any, anything happened today important at all? Oh, they did, huh? The phone company? Uh -huh. Changed all the numbers in the whole area, huh? Uh, I hate to ask, what's, uh, what's our new number? Random three, 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 three. Three? Look, how, how to, how'd it go today? How'd it go today with the three boys, huh? One bloody nose. Hmm. Skin knee. Oh, gosh. Fingers caught in the car door. Ooh. Well, just lie down, honey. You'll feel better in a little while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah soak your fingers in some salt water. That, that'll make it <laughs> Yeah, well, look, honey, I'm going to have to do the show now, and I'll see you right after. Yeah, well, sure I do. Yeah. Well, you know I do. I married you, didn't I? Sure. Well, look, I can't tell you now. No, well, I'm a lot of people out here, and I'll... Look, I'll say it to you when I get home tonight. <laughs> no, look, honey, I, well, believe me, I do, yes. Oh, heavens, all right. I-L-O-V-E-Y-O-U. Yeah, now I'll see you... Oh, for Pete's sake. V E R Y M U S H. C H. I'll see you later. So 
Now, we've heard for some, from some mothers around the country, and they have a problem because the children are staying up to watch our show. And we're very happy they do, but some of the mothers feel that we haven't done anything especially for children. So tonight, I thought I'd take care of that. I can do something for the children, and they can go on to bed. So if you older people don't mind, I had planned to read the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And then somebody told me that they didn't think it would go with the kids nowadays. They thought it would be pretty square, that once upon a time stuff. Because with television, kids have been spoiled, you know, and they like exciting things and dramatic things. So um, I think we can do that, too. Once upon a time, there's a little girl named Goldilocks. The Johnny Carson Show takes you back to August 18th, 741. The first meeting of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You are there. <laughs> Good afternoon, this is Walter Crankcase reporting, August 18th, 741. The curiosity of a nation today is focused on an unpretentious dwelling ever since word was received early this morning that an unidentified intruder has entered the premises in the absence of the rightful owners. At this point, one can only conjecture as to the purpose of this illegal entry. Because of the unprecedented significance of this event, we take you now to the home of the three bears in Sylvan Forest. All things are as they were then, except you are there. <laughs> there is an air of impending drama here today. We are expecting momentarily the arrival of the rightful occupants of this house. Yes, yes, I believe I hear them approaching now. Killing me! <laughs> a little walk before dinner never hurt nobody! No, if you haven't made the porridge so hot, I wouldn't have had to take no walk at all. Uh, <laughs> I like to take walks. I like to fly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bushed. Let's eat and hibernate early. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Papa Bear. Hmm? <laughs> uh, tell me, just what do you do for a living, sir? Oh, government job. Uh, uh, a government job? Mm. Yeah, I just stand around in the parks waiting for the tourists to come by. You know, posing for pictures and stuff like that. Well, that, that must be very interesting work. Interesting, he says. Ever ten minutes, some dope comes by and points his finger and says, Hey, Mildred, look, there's a bear. Great dude. <laughs> Come on, that's it. Eh? Hey, somebody's been eating my porridge. Somebody's been eating my porridge. Somebody's been eating my porridge and it's all gone. Oh. Somebody's been sitting in my chair. Somebody's been sitting in my chair. Everybody follow the plot, okay? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, Mama, uh, Mama Bear. Uh, yeah? Uh, do you have any theories as to why your baby's chair has fallen apart? Yeah! This big lunkhead built it with one of them, uh, do-it-yourself kits. <laughs> one of these days! Ladies and gentlemen, there seems to be an interruption at the door. Perhaps it might solve the mystery of the missing porridge. I'll get it. <laughs> it's that three-year-old crocket kid again. <laughs> hey, look at here. Uh, Something, something seemed to be wrong, Papa Bear? I'll say, somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And somebody's been sleeping in my bed. There she is. Wait a minute, son. It may be a trap. I'll take care of this. <laughs> <laughs> Papa 
Bear. Oh, Papa Bear. Uh, is there anything wrong, sir? Now, this has been the documented account of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. What kind of a day has it been? A day like any other day with the events which alter and illuminate our time, and you were there. And next time, we will take you back to... September 21st, 1953. The first singing lesson of Margaret Truman. <laughs> you are there. to Johnny Carson. Now, a few minutes ago in the Goldilocks and the Three Bears, we showed you how television are affected, kids are affected by television. But most people don't really know how much television has affected our lives in the, in the past eight years. I dare say there's not one of you here in the studio tonight that really realizes it, is there? Not one. So I thought we would take a couple of minutes out tonight, and I would try to point out some of the factors that have uh, influenced us on television. <laughs> no, the reason I'm, uh, I thought I would do this graphically tonight because I think that we can point it up in a much quicker way. For example, this is a chart which shows the different relationships between... <laughs> you see, I'd intended to take just a few minutes here to try to give you the impression that when you leave our show tonight that you've, you've kind of left with a little knowledge. And uh, that's what I'm devoting my time to here. This is a uh, chart that shows the number of sets in use for any given year. And uh, down here at the bottom, the 1050, these are number of sets in use. Now, actually, it's not 10 or 50 or 80. It's tens of thousands. You see, we are limited on the chart because it would be impossible to put three zeros after each number because... <laughs> so when I talk about the number of sets in use, you'll keep in mind that these are in tens of thousands of sets. Now, this survey was taken by the Ziegler Workhoven Institute, which, <laughs> which uh, in 1942 discovered there were some 15,000 television sets. In 1944, 80. In 46, over a million. In 1948, the Ziegler Workhoven survey found that there was over 5 million television sets in use. In 1950, almost 60 million. And in 1952, uh, Ziegler Workhoven found out that 52% of their employees weren't showing up for work. <laughs> flexible reading there. Now, of course, here in 1954. Now, what I want to point out is the tremendous effect that watching television has on your life in relation to your income. Now, the heavy black line here is income. Now, of course, this has to change. It can't be thousands of dollars anymore. Uh, it now represents hundreds of dollars. So you take a family. Take an, um, well, take my family. Please. <laughs> Let us uh, select, first of all, in any uh, discussion of a correlation between income and watching viewing habits, uh, as you might put it. Uh, you, we did put it that way. Uh, <laughs> viewing habits. You must keep in mind that of an average family. Take an average mean family. Now, when I say an average mean family, I don't mean that they're nasty. <laughs> it's, a, it's a term, and a, or the number of people. The average family consists, I think, of five people in the United States. Let us take a family. To point this out, let us take a family that watches television, say, 12 times per week. Now, let us say that they have an income of some $5,000 a year. Now, I think you can see very clearly by the intersection of the dotted line, which is times per week, mind you, and the solid line, which is income. <laughs> the reason I use a graph to illustrate this is, is that I feel to give you um, the intersection of this heavy line, <laughs> intersection of the heavy line and the dotted line, this intersection right here certainly points it up much better than I could tell it to you in a thousand words. <laughs> and that more or less uh, is all the time we have for our little discussion tonight. I just, oh, by the way, this is the, is the variable factor, <laughs> which we didn't have time to get to. But I think any time that you discuss any method of communication that we should all remember what Marconi said. And I know that you all will. <laughs> uh, 
by the way, television is not the only thing that gives us a lot of problems in everyday living. One of the big problems that most people face is marriage. And there are a lot of couples getting married uh, in the summer here, and we thought we might be able to help these young people avoid some of the pitfalls of marriage. Incidentally, here in California, the pitfalls stay open till 9 o'clock on Monday. <laughs> Monday night for your convenience. Now, strangely enough, in marriage, pitfall number one usually starts at the breakfast table. Oh, uh, oh, darling, I'm ready for breakfast. Here's your newspaper. Thank you, dear. We've got eggs for breakfast this morning. Oh, fine. Eggs are my favorite. How do you want them? Oh, I think I'll have them soft this morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what's wrong with this picture? I think it's certainly obvious. Yesterday's newspaper. <laughs> Gee, done to a golden black. Well, if you don't like the way I toast it, why don't you toast it yourself? Well, I just mentioned that... You know, I'm sick and tired of hearing every morning about the toast for breakfast. Well, I... And did. if I hear another word tomorrow about the toast in the morning... Now, friends, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I, uh, I think it's perfectly obvious. She neglected to unplug the toaster from the wall. <laughs> you, uh, you must remember, girls, that you're not going to get much distance unless you remove the plug from the wall. <laughs> Very important thing to remember. It's those little things that count. Ah, oh, gee, dear, uh, is the fruit juice ready? Oh, oh, I'll go get it. Oh, you needn't mind. I'll just have the maid bring it in. Oh, Colette. Colette. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, there's nothing wrong with this picture. <laughs> now, that is pitfall number one. Now, pitfall number two in marriage is the large economy size pitfall, money. And since a man knows best about these type of things, he's got to take a firm stand. He's really got to put his foot down when it comes to money. Darling, I'm going to be very firm about this matter of an allowance. Well, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get one. <laughs> I'll get it, dear. Come in. Now, this is pitfall number three, and believe me, this is a problem. Now, you see, for some reason, all mothers-in-law have the attitude that their sons-in-law are nothing but a bunch of stingy, heartless, good-for-nothing bums. Now, this isn't my personal opinion. I've, I've talked this over with 200 other stingy, heartless, good-for-nothing bums. <laughs> but uh, most men make a mistake toward their, uh, you know, relation like this. Uh, they're antagonistic, and that's wrong. You have to be friendly and kind. Well, welcome to our home. I'm so happy to see you, friendly and kind little old lady. You can't fool me, you stingy, heartless, good-for-nothing bum. <laughs> uh, the funny thing is, this is my mother. <laughs> I'll get your bag and take you up to your room. Thank you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> now, pitfall number four is, uh, is a matter of jealousy. A lot of husbands, you know, get very mad if another man even as much as looks at his wife. Now, this is not fair to your wife. Uh, I think to cure jealousy, uh, a man has got to have confidence, he's got to have understanding, he's got to have sympathy, he's got to have heart. Miles and miles and miles apart. <laughs> Oh, Poopsie, I'm here. <laughs> Poopsie, I'm a little late. Uh, hello. Oh, oh well, you're usually gone by this time. <laughs> well, I, I overslept. Oh, well, is uh, Poopsie here? Yes, I'll call her. Oh, uh, Poopsie, the, uh, the milkman is here. Do we need anything? Oh, well, tell Norman I'll be right down. <laughs> Poopsie will be right down, Norman. Mm. <laughs> now, I certainly enjoy meeting the husbands along my route. Well, I, I imagine they feel the same way, Norman. Oh, uh, well. Hello, Norman. Uh, You're right on time. Flagon of calcium to add to your loveliness. And uh, we'd like a, nic a nickel back on the empty flagon, Norman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll be leaving. Till tomorrow, Poopsie. Until tomorrow, Norman. Uh -huh. 
Now, what does a man do in this situation of jealousy? Does he curb his jealousy? Does he uh, get another milkman? Does he change dairies? Does he start drink a quit drinking milk? Nonsense. He does what any trusting husband would do. He goes out and makes one simple purchase. <laughs> By the way, if you folks, we hope we've tried to help you young married couples, and if you have any problems at all of any nature out there, little things that are bothering you, you know, we'd kind of like to help you out. So you just drop us a card and ask Carson, and we'll see what we can do about it. Now, by the way, a little while ago in the three bears scene, uh, we told you that the bears were eating porridge. And uh, actually, they had to, you see. There was a reason for it, because this was some time uh, before General Foods came along with wonderful minute rice. So uh, come along, minute rice. Well, we uh, hope you've enjoyed our show. And by the way, tomorrow is the final selection in the Miss Universe contest, you know, that's going on in Long Beach, California. And I want to wish all the contestants the best of luck. There is one contestant missing from this international festival, and that is Miss Russia. It was not sent over this year. It was a very close contest there. It was between Miss Collecti Farm and uh, Miss Kremlin. And uh, it was a very fair contest over there. The girl's name who won it was uh, Zelda Molotov. <laughs> measurements were 36, 24, 36. But unfortunately, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> well, thanks for being with us. We'll see you again next week. Good night. Instant Slinky Coffee, the delicious coffee that lets you sleep, has presented the Johnny Carson Show, starring Johnny Carson. Tune in next week, and the show will be brought to you by Revlon, the greatest name in cosmetics.